Hey guys, welcome back on this 4th of July weekend. Hope you're having a good one. I have uh, Monday off, so yay, I get more time to work with bike stuff. So hey, we are at 10,000 subscribers. That's totally nuts, because two years ago, I didn't even know frame building was a thing. So the idea that 10,000 of you guys are interested in this stuff is amazing. Thank you guys. Thanks for coming back each time and leaving great comments, giving me uh, great feedback, and helping me through this process. Okay, so I thought about making one of the those uh, fancy uh, 10,000 subscriber videos. You know, the ones where like people set stuff on fire and, and blow things up. But ain't nobody got time for that. We got work to do, so let's get to it. In this video, we're welding the chainstays to the bottom bracket shell. We are starting off with some tack welds, and uh, you can't tell, but due to me having to turn my head sideways for some of these tacks, I replaced the glass on my hood for the auto darkening filter. I did that because when you're sideways or like you're almost upside down, you can't easily flip the hood over your face because like the hood needs gravity to fall over your face. Okay, so now I'm tacking up the left chainstay and uh, kind of sitting on there a little too long. The whole idea is you don't want to, uh, you want to keep your heat down when you're tacking. The whole point is to put as little heat into the tube as possible. And uh, uh. <laughs> I key hold it. It's crazy because like no matter how long I've, I haven't been welding that long, but I thought I was welding long enough to not be keyholing out tubes. And uh, it just goes to show, I think um, tack welding is like the hardest thing. It, I think it's harder than welding, but uh, that's just my opinion. All right, so uh, here I'm taking out the uh, auto darkening filter and putting the glass back in there because, man, it's funny, like, I got used to the glass and when you switch to an auto darkening filter, you realize how inhibited your um, visibility is with those things. Uh, it's just so much better to use uh, uh, just like a glass filter. Nothing fancy and you can see so much better. All right, so uh, that's uh, I got those tacks on there holding it on. And I can now take the uh, fixture off of the dummy axle. And I'm taking the frame off the jig. And it's weird, uh, watching this now, I didn't realize it at the time, but that's the last time that frame will be on the jig. So it's kind of a significant moment, I guess. All right, so now I'm gonna get the rest of these tacks on now that it's off the jig. Oh man, I made another hole. This is a big one. This one worried me because uh, it's quite large and I wasn't sure if I could fill it without putting too much heat into the steel. So after this hole, shit got real. So uh, here's that top hole that I had made first and I started with that and here's what I ended up with after I filled it and uh, then I just um, went ahead and started filling the other hole and uh, you'll notice I have the um, purge on because I was putting a lot of heat into the tubes at this point so I hooked up my purge
right, now that it's all tacked up, it uh, is safe to take off the dummy axle. And uh, here I'm seeing how much the chain stays pinched, and uh, it's not too bad. I should get this um, on the alignment table, but I couldn't resist putting the wheel on to see if it fits. So that's what I did, and uh, it fits pretty well. This, uh, this was a huge relief. Um, being my first time, I really didn't know what to expect. Um, you can make like all kinds of checks and measurements, but until you get the wheel on, until I got the wheel on, I just couldn't be sure. You can't see my face, but I am just grinning with relief. All right, so uh, now I'm checking the alignment, and um, it's not bad at all. Uh, I'm just like using my hand, and uh, that wasn't quite enough, so I um, got a bar out to just kind of persuade it a little more. It didn't need much at all, and um, after just a tiny bit, I got it to uh, sit right in there snugly, so nice. Alright, so uh, I put the wheel back on and I pushed it into the dropouts all the way forward and that's what the um, clearance on the right chainstay and then clearance on the left chainstay and clearance at the seat tube. So I moved it out to around where the wheel would actually be fastened and um, there's my right chain stay clearance and the left. And uh, while we're on the frame here, I want to show you guys something. Um, this here is a beginner mistake. I attached the chain stay too close to the outer face of the bottom bracket. There's uh, two reasons why you don't want to do this. One, when welding this area, there isn't much material to weld to, and uh, the risk of burning out the material is, is high because there's like nothing there. And uh, two, when I get to the finishing stage of the frame, I'll need to face the bottom bracket, and the facing tool might dig into the chainstay because it's so close. Here's a shot of the facing tool, and uh, you can see it comes really close to the chainstay, but um, I think we'll be okay. And here is the C-tube and tire clearance. Um, I got curious and I thought why not try putting the bottom bracket spindle on. Uh, I found that it fit easily and I could simply turn it by hand to get it on. I put the crank arms on to test clearance. Um, I just push fit them on. And uh, it looks like I'll be good to tighten these. And uh, when I tighten them, I'll have plenty of clearance. Next thing I did was put on the seat stays to see if the wheel would be centered between them. And uh, here's what that looks like. All right, let's uh, weld this up. So uh, things seemed to be going okay until I got to the inside weld of the flat section of the chainstay. I had a really hard time trying to uh, position the torch in a good place. You can see I'm like fidgeting all around and looking for a good position. Um, this was for sure the toughest weld so far, like on the whole frame. I found this to be the hardest. And uh, then I got to this one spot on the chainstay that um, it just did not want to weld without sparking out. I'm thinking the cause was because I was going slightly uphill and the argon, um, it's heavier than air, so it wants to go downhill. So I think I was uh, losing coverage. Eventually I got it to work 
somehow. I don't I don't know what caused it to start working. Um, but yeah, it worked. <laughs> Alright guys, we're getting really close. Next thing is to get those seat stays on, but we'll save those for another video. If you're new to the channel and you like this sort of stuff, please consider subscribing. As always, thanks for dropping in and see you guys later.